Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship Your holy name. The child was born as a gift from heaven, a gift from God sent to save the world. The angels sang His praise as the star shone all around them. Glory to God and peace on earth to men. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship Your holy name. The shepherds came on that glorious evening. They came to see the child sent down from God. They knelt and worshipped in that lowly manger. The promised gift of the Messiah come. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, worship your holy name. And Lord, today I give all my worship, I give my life as an offering. For you are worthy of all praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. O oh, my soul, worship your holy name. I will worship your holy name. We worship your holy name. Hello. It is my joy and honor to welcome you to worship from whenever and wherever you are joining us. As we come to celebrate the second week of Advent, this time in the season of the church and of the year where we prepare ourselves for the coming of our Savior on Christmas. A few announcements before we get started. First of all, it is not too late to join the Wednesday night Advent Bible study based on the book Songs for the Waiting. There are still three more Wednesday gatherings left, so if you are interested in, in taking part in those, please contact Doris Martin or Don Harmon. Also, as well, every day during Lent, we are doing a Jesse Tree uh, devotional for each day that is video-based. So check your emails every day as we email those links out or go to our YouTube page uh, to find those devotions as well. Short videos to center our days and our lives on the coming of Jesus based on the Jesse tree. So now, as God's gathered people of all times and all places, let us come before God in the lighting of our Advent candles. Welcome. Today we celebrate Advent by lighting two candles as we continue to branch out on our journey to the Jesse tree. 
This past week, we enjoyed the beauty of God's creation and the rise of the fall of the seasons, and of course, the unpredictable weather in Nebraska. Adam and Eve had the best of the best, all created by God, but they did not resist the temptation of the evil serpent Satan and were banned from the Garden of Eden. God's people continued to stray from him, so eventually God called on his follower Noah, who saved his family through the familiar story of Noah's Ark. The calling of the animals two by two, 40 days, nights of rain, the flood, and finally the rainbow. God's promise to never flood the earth again. And God's people were on the right journey again. As we view the stars in the nighttime sky, we are reminded of Abraham and Sarah, their son Isaac, and the blessing they received for the God's faithful servants. Their descendants would be as numerous as the stars and become the chosen people of God. But God tested Abraham's faith by asking Abraham to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, after God had told him he would have many descendants. God, as he always does, provides, provided by giving faithful Abraham a lamb to sacrifice, thus saving his son, Isaac. God continued to bless his people through the birth of his son, Jesus. God's sacrificial lamb for each one of us. And because of that, we all say together, thank you, God. Thank you, Q and Tayana, for helping us to prepare ourselves to meet God in this place, in this time of Advent. So now let us join our hearts, minds, and voices together from wherever we are in our call to worship. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of people. You pardoned all their sin. Let us hear what God the Lord will speak, for God will speak peace to God's people. Surely the Lord's salvation is at hand, that God's glory may dwell in our world. Let us prepare for the coming of our Lord when righteousness and peace will meet. And now let us continue to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord as we sing together, Comfort, Comfort, You My People. Comfort, comfort, you my people, tell of peace that says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, bowed beneath oppression's load. Speak to you. calls for us to be comforted for those that are suffering from oppression and from being marginalized as the Israelites were to receive comfort in the coming of the Lord. We know sometimes that we are the ones who are comforted and yet sometimes we are the ones from whom people need comforted. For we don't always live as God created us to live. We don't always live a life of love for God and others. But no matter how we live, God loves us. And so with thankful hearts and joy, we can come before God, confessing our brokenness, knowing we will be forgiven. So let us now come before God in our prayer confession. 
God of preparation. You have been preparing for us since before the world began. Your intentions for us are good and have always been. We confess that our short-sightedness means that we often miss you at work in our world and in our lives. We focus on things that are fleeting, that slip through our grasp, instead of grounding ourselves in your intentions for us, to love one another and care for the earth you made. In this season of preparation, as we prepare for Christmas and the new year, help us to not lose sight of what you have prepared for us, a new heaven and earth, a new life that begins now. In the name of the one who came and is coming again into our world and lives in a new way, receive us now as we confess our struggle and brokenness to you. And amen. The mercy and joy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. Even in this time of preparation, when we wait for God to come again, we are assured that God is already with us and God's love covers us in grace. So friends, believe and proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now, as we invite children, all of God's children of all ages, to be with us and are always welcome, we take this time to be with the youngest of God's children. To another Sunday in Advent, as we're waiting and preparing for Christ's birthday. And when we talk about waiting and preparing, oh my gosh, I'm standing here at the corner of Saltillo and Highway 77. And I'm looking at all the construction that's going on. All the people here are preparing to build a new bypass around the south side of Lincoln. And I'm sure the people around here are waiting and waiting for it to be finished. Because I'm sure it's trying their patience. But talking about waiting and preparing, that's what we need to do as we wait for Christmas the birth of Jesus. We need to prepare our hearts for everyday living. How do we do that? Well, we do it through prayer with Jesus. We do it by talking to the kid at, on the playground at recess who doesn't have anybody to play with. Maybe we partner up with somebody in the classroom who never ever gets to have a partner. Or maybe it's just giving a smile to somebody that looks a little down, opening a door. We need to think about what Jesus would do and how he loved everyone. No matter what they look like, no matter what they did, Jesus was always there for them. So as you prepare and wait for Christmas, open your heart just like Jesus opened his heart to us. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Help us to prepare our hearts as we wait to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but let us carry that celebration throughout the entire year. Let your light shine through us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Karen. And now let us turn to the word of God as professed by the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Let's listen to this ancient text and hear the word that God has for us today. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall be made level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is God's word for us, God's people. And so we say together, thank you, God. In the middle of downtown Atlanta lies Centennial Park a beautiful park and open space that was built for and continues to commemorate the 1996 Olympic Games that were held in Atlanta. Rudy and I went to the park a couple times while I was in seminary, and it was truly a beautiful place for people to grab lunch outside, families to have a picnic and kids to run off some energy, or to get a nice walk in. It's surrounded by sports stadiums, ice rinks, the Coca-Cola Museum, and the CNN building. It is truly a sight to behold and a place where everyone is welcome. But the park also marks a time of unwelcome and great exile for many citizens of Atlanta. Leading up to the 1996 Olympics, the city made a concerted effort to clean up the streets of downtown Atlanta in order to look the best they could for the world. This meant decreasing the homeless population that frequented that area by however much they could. The city began to implement stricter laws that allowed for easier arrests and longer jail terms for things such as loitering, which led to a great increase in the amount of arrests of homeless individuals leading up to the games. The city also began offering bus tickets to the homeless, prepaid one-way bus tickets out of Atlanta if the individual signed a statement that they wouldn't return. Rather than offer services to those in need, the city of Atlanta exiled the homeless into prisons or out of the city in order to show their best selves to the world for an Olympics which represented all, but did not welcome all. The context into which Isaiah is prophesying in our passage today is fairly similar to the context of Atlanta's homeless leading up to the Olympics. The Israelites had been defeated by the Assyrians and then by the Babylonians, and in their losses, they were exiled and given a one-way ticket out of their homeland because it was in the best interest of those in power. The Israelites were displaced in order that they may be more easily controlled and assimilated to the more developed culture of their victors. In this case, the experience of Native American peoples being conquered, exiled, and forcefully assimilated into the victor's culture since the arrival of Europeans in our country would be another apt comparison of the Israelites' context. At the time of the recording of the verses we read in chapter 40, Israel has been in exile for about 150 years. And yet, it is in this context, the context of the exiled, oppressed, ostracized, and defeated, that God speaks and calls for voices to cry out. In the midst of hopelessness and despair, God proclaims that the time of suffering is over. God will resume the Lord's place as the shepherd of God's people, gather all of God's sheep together, and carry them in gentle and loving arms. 
as God returns, the Lord's glory will once again be revealed and all people will experience it together as it is proclaimed, here is your God. But before this happens, there is some prep work that needs to be done. And this is what God needs those voices that have been called to cry out. It is the voices of the exiled and the abused, the oppressed and the ostracized, the poor and the needy, who are to proclaim and guide the work that needs to be done in order to prepare to experience God's presence. They are to cry out that a way in the wilderness needs to be prepared. The curvy desert highways need to be made straight. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low, the uneven ground shall be made level, and the rough places made smooth. The prep work that needs to be done is the removal of every obstacle that will keep anyone from experiencing the Lord's loving and gracious presence. Sure, there were people who had the stamina to curve their way through the desert, the resources to travel over the mountains, and the ability to traverse uneven ground. But not everyone, especially after being oppressed and marginalized for 150 years. If God's goal was to have everyone be present and experience the Lord's presence, then it's the voices of those who couldn't make the journey the way things were, whose voices needed to be heard to ensure that all people could make the journey and be present in God's glory. It is not the voices and ideas of the privileged and the powerful that would proclaim what needed to be done to ensure that all of God's people would be included. But the voices of the exiled, the marginalized, and the oppressed, the voices of those not already included in society. Therefore, it is not by chance that these are the same people that Jesus spent most of his time with in his ministry. Jesus spent his time with the outcasts and the sinners, because it was their voices he had come to lift up to prepare the world for the coming of God's kingdom. It was the voices of the tax collectors and the zealots that he called to be his disciples, the voices of the sick who had been ignored by the rest of society, but Jesus listened to, touched, and healed. The voices of the children whom the world expected to be seen but not heard, whom Jesus called, welcomed to his lap, and told the world to approach God like they did. The voices of the outcasts and sinners with whom he fellowshiped and ate meals while the religious leadership scoffed at the company he was keeping. The voices of said leadership, which Jesus challenged and condemned for their judgment and condemnation of the very voices that Jesus was lifting up the very voices that revealed the mountains and the valleys that were in their way to fully experience God's glory and would prepare all people for the coming of God's kingdom. It was these voices of the wilderness that Jesus spent time with and to whom Jesus proclaimed the presence of God's kingdom in him. And it is this time of Advent as we celebrate the presence of the kingdom that was revealed in Jesus and the full arrival of God's glory in the kingdom that is coming, it is in this time that we are charged by God through the prophet Isaiah to listen for the voices crying out in the wilderness. For they will give us a vision of how we can prepare for the arrival of God's kingdom in full grace and love. How we can prepare not only for ourselves to experience the fullness of God's grace and love, but that all people may experience it together as God desires. Most of the time, and particularly in this time of the uncertainty and insecurity of the pandemic, we are prone to listen to the voices closest to us. Those that we consider to be in our church family, to prepare ourselves for God's presence. In listening to the voices inside our church, we ensure that our church family is comforted and journeys together in the glory of God in the newborn Jesus. But a majority of the time, 
listening to the voices within our church does not lead us to doing the work to ensure that all people will experience the love and grace of God revealed in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. It is the voices of those on the margins that we will hear the cries. We will hear the cries that teach us how we can ensure that all people are with us on this journey. God is speaking through the voices of those who aren't in a church because they can't afford transportation to get there every Sunday. They have to work on Sundays in order to afford a roof over their heads and some food on their plates. Or they can't find good enough clothes at the Salvation Army to fit in with the regular Sunday crowd. The voices that are crying out are those who have been marginalized and oppressed like the Native American, Asian, Hispanic, and Black communities, and immigrants in our country. The voices we've heard crying out for decades, and particularly in this last year. They are the voices of those we serve at Warren's table, the families we deliver beds to, the neighbors who join us for our community meals, who always want to eat more or take more food home with them. Those who attend NA and AA at our church during the week. And the ones who are still abusing drugs and alcohol. These are the voices that can reveal to us how and where we can lower mountains and raise valleys. Make paths straight and level uneven ground. These are the voices that God is using to ensure that when Jesus returns, all people shall see together as the prophet proclaims. And therefore, the voices and cries that we need to be listening to during Advent and every day of the year are these voices. The coming of God's glory for which we prepare is an experience and event that all people shall see together according to God's desire. We prepare for an event so wonderful that God wants everyone to have a one-way ticket to the experience of the love and glory of the inbreaking of God's kingdom into our world. But there is preparation to be done. Preparation that we begin in this time of Advent and continue until the day we see Jesus face to face together. Preparation that is guided by the voices of the marginalized and the oppressed, crying out God's message of hope and salvation, for it is these voices that can reveal to us the mountains that need to be lowered, the valleys that need to be raised, and the roads that need to be made straight, so that all people, all people, are able to experience God's glory in our presence. May we listen and follow the messages of these voices until our church and our world is prepared for the coming of God's glory in Jesus by being a reflection of God's kingdom where all people are experiencing God's presence together. And may all God's children say together, Amen. Having heard God's voice and message to us, let us now turn the voices of our hearts and our souls and our minds to God in prayer. Let's pray. O God, on the second Sunday of Advent, we ponder our human predicament, recognizing how often we find ourselves overwhelmed by circumstances, stuck in ditches of various sorts, or given to aimless meandering of paths that lead nowhere, or buried under by seemingly insurmountable challenge, and obstacles. And yet you have promised to lift every valley, straighten the crooked path, and level the mountains in order to come to us and lead us home. We hear your promises, O God. Empower us by your Spirit to see the way you have set before us. Empower us as a community of faith to accompany one another on the journey. Help us to listen to each other and to the voices on the margins with compassion when we feel fearful or angry or lost. And help us to recognize your tender love that is ever before us. Help us to believe the good news, the gospel, that we are not left to our own devices. You have not left us in the ditch or aimlessly wandering in exile. You have come close in the incarnate Christ, one with the human face, who has left a footprint for us to follow. 
We pray for the world of nations, including our own as we continue to grapple with a relentless pandemic. We pray especially for the vulnerable among us, for medical professionals and staff, for essential workers, for parents with school-aged children, for the elderly, and for those with pre-existing health conditions. Oh God, help us to live responsibly in ways that protect the well-being of others. We pray for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones during these difficult times. We pray that you would grant wisdom to the leadership of our local communities, our cities, our states, and our country, that they might discern a path forward in these perilous times. Indeed, grant all of us wisdom and courage for the living of these days. Great voice, you call to us in our own wilderness. Help us to repair your way. Help us to clear out the muckiness of the world that creeps in, selfish ambition, greed, envy, hunger for power and control. Instead, help us to prepare with love, joy, hope, peace, kindness, and mercy. Guide us in your ways of preparing by looking at what we have and what we can share, by turning to the needs of others and making sure they are met. May the spirit of gratitude and generosity not be for a season, but instead become our way of life. Cry out to us in our wilderness of the world and call us into your ways. For your reign is breaking through in our world and in our lives. Lord, we lift up these prayers to you that have been spoken aloud and those that are on our hearts and minds. For we entrust all our concerns to you, God. Lord, we commend to your care our souls and our bodies, our minds and our thoughts, our health and our work, our parents, our children, our families, our neighbors and friends, our life and our death. We place them all in your hands this day and always. And Lord, with the confidence of your love and grace in Jesus Christ, we pray to you as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to do the work of preparing for the coming of God and Jesus Christ, let us sing together now, prepare the way. Prepare the way, O Zion, your Christ is drawing near. Let every hill and valley a level way appear. Greet one who comes in glory, foretold in sacred story. O oh, blessed is Christ that came in God's most holy name. Christ brings God's rule, O Zion. He comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom, and justice, truth, and love. Lift high your grace resounding, for grace and joy abounding. O oh, blessed is Christ that came in God's most holy name. Fling wide your gates, O Zion. Your Savior rule embrace And tidings of salvation Proclaim in every place All lands will howl rejoicing Their adoration voicing Oh blessed is Christ that came In God's most holy As we prepare for the coming of the Lord, let us listen for the voices that are crying out in the margins. 
the voices that God is speaking through that reveal to us how we can prepare the way so that all people may come and experience God's presence together. And as we do, let us commit our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ in my beginning, Christ there at my end. Christ be in my journey, Christ everlasting friend. Christ be in my waking, Christ at my repose. Christ in every action, Christ when eyelids close. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, the Lord lift up his countenance to you and grant you peace. The Lord's name is upon all of God's children. We are all blessed. And may all of God's children say together, Amen.